The average salary of a software engineer in San Francisco, United States is $242,000, which is an insane amount of money to be paid to someone who's just graduated college, just sitting behind a computer in some office. But it's not like this everywhere. For example, in Paris, France, the average salary for the exact same job at the exact same experience level at the exact same companies is $66,000. Now, of course, this is comparing the mecca of the tech industry, Silicon Valley, to an economy that has never been known for its higher salaries in any industry. But if you compare any city in the United States to almost any city outside of the United States, you will see a similar pattern. Now, as a European myself, I was always extremely jealous of this. I had to do the same work, complete the same kinds of interviews, work just as hard to break into the tech industry in London, only to be paid less than half of my colleagues who did the exact same thing in the US. And there's also a very big reason why I left the tech industry so early to pursue my own business full time. It simply makes no sense to keep working for 45K a year when I was making much more than that from my business. Whereas if I had been doing the exact same job in America, there's a good chance that I would have kept my job alongside my business for much longer because the pay is so much higher there. Now, for most Europeans, the way they will think about it is that, well, that's just how it is. In Europe, we get free healthcare, we get all these kind of things, and we'll get into my opinions and all of that in a moment. But in this video, I just wanted to dive deeper into why is it the case that software engineers in the US get paid so much more, like disproportionately more compared to their counterparts in Europe. We'll also talk about whether learning to code is even worth it in Europe and why I believe that the situation with tax salaries in Europe versus the US is only going to get worse in the future. And also we'll talk about the one exception, the one country in Europe that actually is on par with the US in terms of salaries, but I'll reveal that towards the end of the video. For now, try to guess what that is. And by the way, the purpose of this video is not to say that one of these places is better or worse than the other, just looking at the salary question. Now, the easiest explanation for the massive disparity in salaries between the United States and Europe is that the US simply has much more big tech companies. Therefore, the biggest and most important technology is built in the US, which means that these companies can simply afford to pay their engineers a lot more than European ones. But this argument has two problems. First of all, all of these same big tech companies have offices in European countries like the UK, France, Spain, and businesses are rational creatures that want to make money. So if software engineers are so much cheaper to hire in Europe, why don't they just outsource all of this engineering work to Europe? And number two, even if this is a part of the explanation, this simply leaves us with another question, which is why does the US so utterly dominate Europe in the number of big tech companies. So we'll get back to the first point in a second, but first let's understand how the US came to dominate the tech industry so much. And to do that, we need to go back in time for a moment. Now the start of the modern tech industry can be traced back to 1955 in Silicon Valley in California. This was a time when the first computers were starting to be built, the birth of the modern semiconductor industry, which is what the modern computers were built out of, started in Silicon Valley. And this is significant because it meant that the whole idea of a technology company or a technology technology startup built on modern computers started in Silicon Valley in the United States, which simply gave the US tech market a massive head start. So why did this tech industry start specifically in Silicon Valley? Well, at this time, a big problem with any company that wanted to develop new technology was that it was very hard for a new unestablished company to get funding to build new products. Because the nature of building technology products is there is probably a long amount of time and effort and resources in the beginning beginning that is needed to first build the technology before that technology can then make any money. So usually they will need some kind of investment or loan to fund the creation of this technology unless they're somehow able to work for free for potentially years. But the problem with that from the investor's point of view is that you never know if a technology is ever going to be viable, if it's ever going to actually make money. So there is massive risk here. That was until through a combination of West Coast culture to some new favorable tax laws for investments in specifically in the west coast of the US and many other factors which you can read more about in the book The Power Of which essentially chronicles this entire story. It just so happened that it was in Silicon Valley where people realized that hey it might be a good idea to combine people with money with bright tech savvy innovative young graduate from Stanford and other institutions in the area to allow them to build all kinds of new cool technology that can change the world. 
So Silicon Valley became the only place in the world where you had people, these new so-called venture capitalists that were willing to give investment into these very uncertain new technology projects. So a bunch of new tech startups started popping up in this location, specifically Google, Microsoft, Intel, Facebook, etc, etc, etc. And the rest of the world sort of caught on to this much, much later. And because the US, specifically California, had such a big head start in this new software industry, it led to a snowball effect because if all the biggest tech companies were in this one location all the brightest tech talent would also go into that one location which would then mean that all the investors would also want to be there because that is where the brightest minds of this new tech industry also were which would again lead to more and more companies popping up in this one location and giving it a bigger and bigger and bigger advantage so this partially explains why there's simply so much engineering talent and thus so many tech companies specifically in the us and specifically in silicon valley but it still doesn't explain why can it be that today that the rest of the world knows about this we don't see nearly as many new tech startups popping up in other locations around the world and to answer this i can actually give you some of my personal experience now i had a tech startup briefly last year it failed long story but in any case at one point we were seriously thinking about where should we form this startup now i'm from finland and my co-founders were also from finland so we were considering does it make more sense to found a startup in finland or the us and if our goal was to raise funding as in that was the kind of startup we wanted to build it was very obvious that we wanted to have the best terms most access to funding and simply the biggest chance to grow this company as fast as possible we should obviously form it in the us because the us simply has most venture capitalists with most access to funding and the terms that we could get this funding with in the us were incomparable to the kinds in europe because it simply happens to be the case that to this day access to funding for new companies is unparalleled in the us compared to europe now why is this the case well the first reason is that the us is simply a much more business friendly jurisdiction what Europe and specifically a lot of the EU countries and the UK have done is basically committed complete suicide in terms of attracting entrepreneurs to these countries. All they seem to do is focus on endless regulations that make it very difficult to start new businesses with endless bureaucracy and laws that simply make it way too risky for people to operate a new kind of business like this in Europe. European laws, for various cultural reasons, are much more geared towards big established businesses who have the ability and the funds to deal with all of these laws and regulations whereas in the US it's much more streamlined it's much more easier to operate a business there which is why a lot of even European founders with the best business ideas will end up simply going to the US to form their business and what this leads to is that a lot of these new startups end up being formed in the US, which leads to much higher demand for software engineers in the US because there are simply so many more jobs available. And what this leads to is that all of the companies, not just these startups, but all the companies have to raise the salary offers that they give because they're having to compete with so many more companies for the same engineers. And this is just simple supply and demand market dynamics. But like I said, this is only part of the story. Surely if European engineers were just as effective as American ones, over time, surely this will lead companies to simply push their engineering jobs to Europe and perhaps do the job remotely, which would over time lead the salaries to equalize a lot more. And this is evidently not the case. And so to explain the rest of the wage difference, we need to look at culture. So the first thing to understand is that this disparity in these salary differences is not just restricted to tech. The GDP per capita in the US is a whopping $76,000. That means that on average, every US worker generates $76,000 worth of value versus $37,000 in the EU on average, or $46,000 on average in the UK. In layman's terms, what this means is that on average, a US worker simply produces a lot more value than the average EU or UK worker. In fact, almost double as much value. So it makes sense at high level why a US worker would get paid more for the extra value that they produce. So then, why is it the case that US workers produce so much more value than European ones? Is it because they're much smarter or something like that? Well, I don't think so. To understand this, let's break down the value that a worker will produce into its constituent parts. So the value on broad terms that any employee will produce will be the hours that they work times their productivity. All other things being equal, if in one country people work longer than in another, and they produce as much value per hour, then the people who work more are going to produce more overall value. And also all other things being equal, if two workers work the same amount of hours, but one of them is more productive, as in they get more done in those hours, that worker is gonna produce more value. And so in terms of the first component, it's very true, and I think most people will know this, 
people in the US work much longer hours. They take less holidays because there's less laws about like work-life balance and like all this kind of stuff, which you can have whatever opinion about that that you want. But the end result in terms of productivity is going to be that people in the US are going to produce more value simply because they work a lot longer. But I looked at a lot of economic data and it's not ju just the hours worked that makes the US worker produce more value. It is also true that workers in the US are much more productive than those in Europe. And there's not a clear answer for why this is, but the most probable explanation is that companies in the US simply invest a lot more into the productivity of their workers. They invest a lot more into technology, into better tools for people to get more done. The US invests in technology, whereas Europe invests in, well, regulations. And the last factor to consider is taxes. Now, neither of these places are particularly low tax, but the US on average is much, much lower tax than Europe. For example, a gross salary of $150,000 will leave you between $111,000 and $101,000 off the taxes in the US, whereas in France, it will only leave you with $81,000. But that is not all, because the taxes that you pay from your gross salary is not everything. In most countries, the employer will, on top of that, have to pay extra taxes to the government. These are called employer contributions. And in Europe, these are much higher, meaning that the salary that is advertised is not actually the salary that the employer has to pay. Because on top of that salary, they have to pay an extra amount in taxes to the government, which means that the total salary that they actually have to pay is much higher, which means that the salary that they're going to advertise has to be lower. So as a conclusion, I think there's two main reasons why engineers in the US get paid so much more than in Europe. Number one is that the US is simply a more tech and business focused country that focuses a lot more making it easy to do business rather than regulating every part of doing business in favor of workers' rights, work-life balance, benefits, and things like this. Which means that the most ambitious companies are going to prefer to be formed in the US. And also the most ambitious employees, the ones who want to make more money rather than living a chill lifestyle, are going to prefer to go to the US. So the talent over there is simply much stronger and there are much more jobs available who have to compete with each other to entice this talent to work for them over their competitors. And then on the other side, is it simply easier for a software engineer in the US to produce more overall value because they work longer hours and it is easier for them to be productive because companies over there are more likely to invest into technology and different tools to make it easier for them to be productive because that is the focus of the US culture versus European culture. Now does this mean it's not worth it to learn the code in the EU? Well, no, it still obviously has one of the highest incomes out of any country in the world and if you work as a software engineer in Europe, you're still gonna earn much much higher than average compared to the other jobs that you have available in that location. But it is true that it is much harder to get rich with coding in Europe versus the US. That is simply the reality. Both places are going to have their pros and cons. If you want to make it, you want to make the most money possible, then it's undeniable that working in the US is the best bet. Now, the problem you're going to have if you're not from the US is that it might be impossible to get a work visa. So that is why I didn't personally go there because I couldn't literally go there. So for me, the best option was to not work in tech and simply start my own business and move out of Europe and out of the crazy taxes because for me, that was the best possibility to make it. Now, Europe still offers great benefits. It's going to be right for some people, but I hope that this gives you some sort of an explanation as to why same employees, same software engineers in the US earn so much more than their counterparts in Europe. Let me know what you think of this wage disparity. Let me know also if you could choose either of these places, which one would you prefer to work in? And I mentioned before that there is one country in Europe that is the exception that has almost the same level of salaries as the US, and that is going to be Switzerland. And the reason why Switzerland has such high salaries is for a lot of the same reasons as the US. It's a much more hardworking culture. It has much lower taxes, much easier to do business. And it's generally a place where people just get paid very well in almost any industry. So if you're in Europe and you wanna make it in tech, you wanna make the most money, going to Switzerland is going to be your best bet. If I had stayed in the tech industry, it is highly likely that that is where I would have gone. With that said, even though salaries in the US are so much higher than Europe, it is also a sad reality that in this day and age, salaries across the board everywhere are going down. And if you wanna know why and whether this will keep happening or if the salaries will come up, then I recommend you watch this video where I deep dive into that topic on exactly why big tech salaries have collapsed so much and what you can do about this. So go watch that video next. Leave a like on this one if you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.